Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel, I'm Antonov2 as usual and today we'll be taking a closer look at the Jagd Panther 2, a tier 8 German tank destroyer, one of three actually. And in the course of this review and guide I'll be taking you through the stats of this tank, comparing it to the Ferdinand that's probably closest competitor. And I'll also be giving you tips on how to play this tank to its maximum effectiveness, take you through my recommended crew skills, equipment, ammo loadout and module research and then also show you some great gameplay and give you my final opinion on whether this tank can compete with Ferdinand or if you should opt for the more heavy version in the German tank destroyer branch. So let's begin by looking at the module tech tree. You should already have a 105mm gun unlocked from the Panther, so you only have to grind out this 12.8cm pack and uh, actually the grind is not too bad but that's what you want to get first you can mount this gun with the stock suspension so go ahead because the tier 10 gun will give you a big boost in firepower after that get the suspension and then upgrade the engine fairly straightforward here so next we'll be doing a rundown of the yak pan for stats and comparing them to the ferdinand because as you can see the ferdinand is basically the other choice you get in the german tank destroyer tech tree when you want to go for the Jagdpanzer E100 and both these tanks are fairly similar, they both use the same gun so let's have a look how they stack up against each other. So here on the left we've got the Jagdpanzer 2 and on the right side we have the Ferdinand. So the DPM is identical, the penetration, damage and so on are all the same because the gun is exactly the same gun. And 2620 DPM is actually pretty respectable at tier 8 for a tank destroyer. Now the penetration at 246 is also very decent, the damage however at 490, although it actually is not bad at all and at tier 8 it really hurts, but there are some other tier 8 tank destroyers like uh, say the ISU-152 or the Rheinmetall Borsig that get a lot more damage at 750 hit points, but still these shots are definitely noticeable when you hit them home. The rate of fire at 5.35 is very good, especially considering the kind of medium to high alpha damage this gun gets for a tier 8 tank destroyer. So you are basically able to shoot yourself out of sticky situations, for example. The caliber at 128mm is also pretty good because it means that you can overmatch up to 32mm of armor. So that makes you fairly competitive against some medium tank side armor, say. The shell velocity however at 920 is a bit at the lower end I'd say so especially because you want to use this gun for sniping mostly or kind of medium range engagement uh, that can be a bit tricky. The aim time at 2.21 is pretty good and the accuracy at 0.34 is also very nice. You get better dispersion values as the Ferdinand so that is very very good and 0.18 and a dispersion is pretty decent. However, the Ferdinand gets the upper hand when it comes to gun depression. 8 degrees of gun depression is very very good on the Ferdinand, unfortunately the Panther 2 only gets 6 and that can feel fairly limiting and limit your abilities to go hold down and to use this tank's amazing superstructure armour and also to kind of crest ridge lines and so on so 8 degrees makes you a lot more flexible and that is a noticeable drawback of the Panther 2. But then again, the Yak Panther 2 has got some pros as well. It's got 55 kilometers an hour top speed limit. That is amazing for a tier 8 tank destroyer and leaves the Ferdinand trailing far behind with only 30 kilometers an hour. The engine power is slightly worse than the Ferdinand, but because the tank is lighter, it still gets a better power to weight ratio at a fairly decent 13.25. Now that is actually more of a kind of a fast heavy tank power to weight ratio, but the great thing is that you get very, very good ground resistances, a lot better than the Ferdinand's, and that means that you are a lot quicker than the Ferdinand. And the Yak Panther 2 definitely drives more like a medium tank than like a heavy tank, and the Ferdinand most certainly drives like a heavy tank. So the mobility upgrade is very noticeable. And another huge pro of the Yak Panther 2 is its better track traverse at 38 degrees. That is amazing for a tank destroyer and will allow you to sometimes even avoid getting circled by enemy light tanks. So that is very very good and that's a problem that the Ferdinand has is when you get round the Ferdinand's flanks which aren't very well protected then the Ferdinand is basically done for but with a Yak Panther 2 you can very often outrun even the traverse of the fastest tanks on the enemy team. 
Now, the armour here doesn't look too impressive for the Yak Panther 2, and for Ferdinand's definitely got very strong armour, but we'll have a look at that in just a second in more detail, so I'll just skip over that for the time being. The view range is slightly inferior to the Ferdinand, but both these tanks get fairly bad view range for a tier 8 vehicle actually, because the average would be around 380 metres. The camo value is um, not very impressive on the Yak Panther 2, and that can be an issue when trying to snipe, but at least it is better than the Ferdinand, the Ferdinand has really bad camo, but still there are a lot of tier 8 tank destroyers that do a lot better in this regard. So as promised, we'll now be taking a closer look at the armour profile of the Yak Panther, and as you can see, it's pretty clear cut actually, you've got a fairly weakly armoured hull that any tank this vehicle will engage will be able to penetrate most of the time, unless you angle it. If you angle it like this, say, then some tier 6 tanks will have some problems penetrating, but they always have the lower glaciers, which is really weak, so really, the hull is useless. But the great news starts when we look at the superstructure, because this superstructure, being angled pretty strongly, actually provides up to 250 millimeters of frontal armor protection, and that means when you get this tank hull down, even tier 10 tanks will struggle penetrating it. That is very, very useful. Unfortunately, your opportunities to use this great superstructure are kind of limited by the mediocre gun depression of 6 degrees, but still, this is definitely something to look out for, and actually, the superstructure is noticeably stronger than on the Ferdinand. Many tier 8 heavy tanks, such as the T-34 or the IS-3, will be able to slice through the Ferdinand's frontal armour, but with the Yak Panther 2, that is not the case. So, in a way, when you get into a higher tier matchup, actually, I would rather be driving the Yak Panther 2 than the Ferdinand, because the Ferdinand has very good frontal armour against lower tier opponents, but at tier 8 and higher, especially from tier 9 onwards, enemies will be able to slice through this most of the time, and if a Ferdinand angles when it's got this weak spot here, which is completely unarmoured almost. So we can conclude that the Yak Panther 2 has got kind of mixed armour here, with very very bad hull armour, but very good superstructure armour, and you always have to keep that in mind when driving this vehicle, and if you use your armour effectively by, for example, going hull down, then actually the Yak Panther 2 has got a higher survivability than the Ferdinand. Unfortunately, however, the Yak Panther 2 gets 350 hit points less than its tier 8 German counterpart, and that means that you can take one or even two shots less than the Ferdinand. So, in the Yak Panther, you very much have to rely on your good maneuverability to get yourself into a position where you're not really exposed to enemy fire unless you can count on your superstructure armor and your lower hull not being hit. So frontally we can see that you can unfortunately hit the engine when you kind of hit the peak part of the hull just where the upper glacius meets the lower glacius. And if you're looking for weak spots to pen the armor you can hit this machine gun spot on the front of the hull and also the lower glacius and if the tank is hull down then you can try to hit the slip of armor on the superstructure just beneath the gun mantlet and that is a weak spot as well although it is fairly tricky to hit and you have to be up close to do so. From the side, we can see that the ammo rack is located at the frontal part of the hull, so you can take it out when aiming there, and then behind that we get the engine. From the rear, we have the engine again, or at least some flammable part of the module components that uh, locate just on the kind of lower part of the rear armour. And from the other side, again, we have the ammo rack and the engine behind that. So now I'll be giving you some advice on equipment, crew skills and ammo loadouts. So let's have a look at the ammo first, and I take a 20 AP round, 6 APCR and 4 HE round loadout. But as usual this comes down to how much money you're prepared to spend on premium. Premium ammo is not really all that necessary on this tank because you get very very good penetration on your standard rounds already. The APCR can also come in handy though if you're trying to pull off some long range snipes and want to have that boost in shell velocity. The HE is also fairly good to boost your damage per minute, especially when you're firing at some lightly armoured tanks, like for example the Borsig, that actually are pretty popular at tier 8 right now, also the Scorpion G for example. So this is the loadout I go for and I fare pretty well with it, so I can definitely recommend that. For crew skills, now 
I would not look to my crew skills too much when selecting skills for this tank because I've geared my crew more towards preparing them for the Jagdpanzer E100 later on, that's why you see me using repairs here. For the Jagdpanzer 2, however, maybe I would go for camouflage instead of repairs because you do not really want to play this tank as offensively as say a Ferdinand or a Jagdpanzer E100 because of its kind of bad hull armor you want to stay back more and then the camouflage can come in more handy however you definitely want to go for the brothers in arms probably maybe even as the first crew skill or at least as the second crew skill and sixth sense is also a must have then I went for clutch braking on the driver because the great hull traverse is very good on this tank and because clutch braking increases your hull traverse by a percentage, not by a fixed amount, that means that you get a lot of benefit from clutch braking and it makes this tank even more agile. But one thing that you could also do on the driver is take controlled impact because the Panther is a very very good vehicle for ramming because it's got a surprisingly high weight of with my loadout 53.8 tons and it is very speedy so ramming can be a good idea then you probably want to go for safe storage on the loader at some point because the ammo rack does get hit and speaking of module damage preventative maintenance is a very good idea on the driver because the engine can be hit from the front as we've just seen so preventative maintenance will help with that engine damage and it is fairly frequent on this vehicle. For equipment you've got a fairly big choice on the Panther 2. I went for improved vents, the tank gun rammer and a GLD. Now you definitely want to have a tank gun rammer no question about it and the GLD is probably good too but I'm not quite sure about vents, you could also maybe swap those out for a camouflage net or even something like coated optics or binox. If I'd uh, opt out of the uh, vents, I'd probably go for coated optics as opposed to something like binoculars or camouflage because you have fairly bad view range, so the optics will definitely help with that. And because the gun arc of this vehicle is fairly narrow, you have to move your hold fairly often and that means that camouflage net and binox will be deactivated but coated optics will still stay in action. So that's what I would recommend. Either the loadout I went for, vents, gun rammer and GLD or gun rammer, GLD and coated optics. So that's probably enough of hanging around in the garage so I'll now take this vehicle out to the battlefield and show you how to use it on Malinovka. So we have spawned as promised on Malinovka and a, it's a fairly nice matchup to right game. I'm heading for this part of the map here because uh, I figure I don't really want to go on top of the hill. My reasoning being because I don't have good gun depression and I'm fairly vulnerable in that kind of a position to for example flanking shocks. Shots not shocks sorry. And uh, that's why I locate here to take kind of try to support my scouts and heavy tanks advancing along the map and uh, as we can see I get a fairly beefy shot to the side armor of that uh, Japanese heavy and then we ammo rack the German tier 6 medium tank per guy there allows us to do a fairly nice amount of damage and then we put another great shot into that Jack Panther and you can see that uh, the DPM of this tank is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Uh, the, if you can keep this gun firing, it will really, uh, you know, chunk away those hit points from your enemies. So, I really like to locate here where I am right now in supporting tanks like the Yak Panther 2, like, say, the AMX CDC, the Leopard 1, vehicles like those, because you have fairly good soft cover here and if you get spotted you can retreat back here and get cover from this kind of little hill that you can drive behind so this is a very nice spot and also you can a lot of the time get shots over at enemy light tanks that are trying to spot your team over there so it looks like this Oni might be trying for it again but I think we've kind of put him off for good by now so uh, he just seems to be chilling behind that church and uh, <laughs> you know waiting for uh, for a break so I decide to try to take this pretty chancy shot at the Tiger 2 here I zero in leave the shot and there you go so that's what you can do with the accuracy of this gun fair enough it's not like a Leopard 1's gun or something like that that is you know dead on accurate but it is accurate enough to be a sniper and uh, it's just at that kind of I'd say it's just at that uh, 
verge of not being able to snipe anymore but it's still good enough and the aim time is fairly decent too especially for the high caliber and as you can see right there it hits true again so uh, the performance is definitely very nice and this is just kind of the best situation you can be in in the yak pattern for two because you can uh, I can support my vehicles on my team's vehicles on two flanks I get spotted right there so I retreat immediately uh, but this is kind of a, yeah, a very good place to be in right now for me and the good thing is you could say of course Ferdinand could could do this here just as well as a yak pan for two but then in the later game once the enemy lines start thinning out it uh, the Yak Panther 2 has definitely got the edge over a Ferdinand because a Ferdinand in that kind of position would be too slow to you know do the cleaning up of the leftover enemy vehicles but a Yak Panther 2 can definitely speed around the battlefield with that great top speed and good terrain resistance as it gets and uh, you know pick up some last few kills so we've had a fairly good impact in this game already we've almost done 3000 damage here and haven't even moved away from our initial location but I realize now that at some point soon I'll probably need to move up because uh, the enemy lines are thinning out by now and this is the kind of point in time where uh, a Yak Pan for 2 is better than a Ferdinand because of that better speed and um, I figure now that there's a pretty big bunch of enemy tanks located on the A line still, but I have to be careful that I don't get shot on the side by say that AMX 1375 that is now making a fairly cheeky move on our team's T71 over there. I guess the T71 is done for and I don't really want to drive over there right now because I'm afraid of flanking shots coming in from over here, but I realize that the E7, E25, not E75, has uh, spotted me anyway, so I have to turn my frontal armor towards him, and oh no, I missed my shot, but luckily the AMX 1375 was reloading there, and the SU-12244 takes him out for me, so thanks for having my back there, mate. So this E25, who was annoying me earlier, is now... Uh, just in front of us and he's running for the hills or away from the hills would be more accurate probably and uh, let's see if we can hit this quickly moving tank no but that was a fairly clutch chancy shot anyway but I took it so, uh, because you know why not it's always better to take a shot than not take a shot most of the time at least so let's see if we can pick up this yak pan for two here actually a pan for two excuse me sure enough we get him and uh, that's IKV is next, hopefully. Let's see. Blind shot. Yes, we got him. That was really lucky. Okay. But right now you can see how the hull armor of this tank gets penetrated fairly easily. But again, when they hit the superstructure, as we could see right there, we bounce. But we took a fair amount of damage right there. So that shows you um, that you cannot really afford to be exposed for a very long time in this vehicle. And a Ferdinand probably would not have taken all that damage in that situation however then again Ferdinand probably would not have been able to move up here in time to get those two more kills so I'd still rather have the Yak Pan for two here in this situation now we're aiming oh we get another ammo rack we get the top gun I can't believe it putting our damage total up to 4006 kills and now the hunt is on for V25 so uh, we all know where he is basically, we're just closing in and this is really where you want to have that mobility in the Yak Pan for 2 to uh, be able to sit in the bush and do nothing. No, just kidding. I'm going to drive up now and uh, let's see if we can get him. But obviously there's some competition here from the SU-12244 who is also gunning for his third kill here. So I take my shot kind of low roll there and the SU-12244 rams the E25 to death so there you go that's the Yak Pan for 2 for you and I think this game showcased uh, perfectly the strengths and weaknesses of the tank because as you could see we uh, were able to snipe and support very effectively racking up a huge amount of damage from that location fairly far behind our allied lines but then when 
the state of the battle and the distribution of enemy tanks allowed it, we were able to push up very aggressively and hunt down our remaining enemy vehicles. But on the other hand, we could also see that when it was trying to come over that ridge back there, the gun depression was fairly limiting and also that our hull armor was penetrated quite a lot. So let's have a look at the post-game stats to see how well exactly we did in this round. We got a first class mastery badge, high caliber, and the top gun in that game, 52,000 credits and just shy of 4,000 experience. We totaled 1,158 XP and 4,814 damage with those six frags. We were also able to pick up. So a pretty nice result there. 14 shots fired, 11 direct hits, and of those 11 hits, 11 were penetration. So that sort of shows you how strong this gun is when you get it into a tier 8 game. But don't be afraid of tier 10 games either, because uh, basically this is the same gun that, say, the mouse uses at tier 10 on the Yak Panther 2 at tier 8. So really, this gun is still very competitive at tier 10. And its accuracy and aim time and so on are very very good too for these long range shots as you could see against that tiger too so yeah that was it for the post game stats and as you can see the tank is very very strong and definitely a force to be reckoned with so let's quickly take it back to the garage and then i'll give you my opinion on whether it is strong enough to compete or even be better than the ferdinand so the Yak Panther 2, uh, I must say I had a very very good time playing through it and although there are other tier 8 tank stories that I like more, like for example the SU-101 which is also very good, I think that the Yak Panther 2 is definitely uh, a very unique vehicle because it is very fast but it's got this huge gun and it kind of combines a very weakly armoured tank with a very heavily armoured tank. So it's got lots of kind of different strengths and weaknesses, but I think overall this tank is very, very solid and one of the better tier 8 tank destroyers probably. So is it better than the Ferdinand? Well, I'd say yes, but it's situational. So as I already pointed out, the Ferdinand is probably the better option in a tier 8 game where its armour is really very strong against lower tier opponents and the Ferdinand allows you to play the tank a bit differently to the Yak Panther 2 because if you're top tier and in a good matchup you can just push to the front line like an assault gun basically and bounce enemy fire and play the tank very aggressively and with the Yak Panther 2 you have to be a bit more passive and play as a bit more of an assassin or more of an opportunist I guess but then when you get this tank into a higher tier game I think the Yak Panther 2 is better than the Ferdinand because its superstructure armor is still effective there and its hull armor isn't obviously but then the Ferdinand's armor wouldn't be effective in a tier 9 or 10 game anyway so it doesn't really matter how thick the armor is at that point and the gun is definitely very competitive so it kind of depends on what kind of playstyle you like but for me the fact that the Yak Panther 2 is just so much better at shifting around the battlefield at the end of the game just is a massive bonus and a big pro of this tank so I probably favor the Yak Panther 2 over the Ferdinand but again it kind of comes down to your preferred playstyle. I'm not going to keep this tank because Although I'd say it is a very nice vehicle, it's not like one of my favourites and not a keeper for me, but it was definitely not a pain to grind through and uh, I hope all you guys will enjoy playing it as well once you get to it. So thanks for watching this video, I hope it was somewhat educational or maybe even entertaining for you guys. If it was, make sure to hit that like button or maybe even subscribe, I would appreciate that a lot. Thanks for watching as usual and I'll see you next time or maybe even on the battlefield. Goodbye.